Welcome to the fifth part in this series on making music with Milky Tracker. This episode will perhaps be a bit far out. We will talk about making samples, drum samples. The first step in this process will be visualizing the sound you want to achieve. I do not in any way claim to be an authority on these matters, but I will try to point in the right direction, or one direction of many possible directions. Let's get started. Short, fast, to the point, multiple! I hope you took my advice from the last tutorial and played around a bit with the different waveforms. The best thing about music is that there are no rules. You're free to do whatever you want. My philosophy is that a lot of creative power is just waiting to be released in the trivial act of playing. So, what are you waiting for? Go and play! Now on to Milky Tracker, our toy of choice. In the last tutorial we looked at generating waveforms for regular use. We need a beat though. We need glue for our melodies. The first thing that sets a drum sample apart from a regular sample is that whereas a regular sample loops for as long as it's played, a drum sample plays only once per trigger. Think of a piano. When you hit the key, the note sounds for as long as the key is pressed. Well, not really. An organ would suit the purpose better. A drum on the other hand you just hit and it's over. You won't get a sustained drum sound from holding the drumstick pressed against the drum. Now let's make a snare sample. I owe a lot to YouTube user Crocs. This one video taught me a lot. How does a snare drum sound? Or more specifically, how do we want it to sound? My recommendation is, use your voice. Experiment, even though it feels awkward. You can laugh at me now, cause I'm going to show you what I mean. Shh. If I think about what I just did, and try to dissect the sound, I come to the following conclusion. The sound has a tone to it. That would be represented by a waveform. After the tone there is noise. To add more attack to the sound we can also start off with a short amount of noise. Now we need to bring this concept out of our heads and into the sample editor. Open the sample editor just as before. Right click the timeline and select new. Here's another aspect where drum samples are different. They're longer. Instead of 64 or somewhere around there we choose a much higher number. 1000 to 2000 usually cuts it for me. Think about it. Regular samples loop and can therefore be short in size, just long enough to squeeze one wave cycle in there. The drum loops play one time and thus need to contain all the wave cycles used. Let's choose a size of 2000. If you did your homework, you might have noticed the characteristics of the different waveforms that are available to us. I want to use square waves because they have a nice edge, but aren't as sharp as saw waves. I think we'll place the waves here. Make sure the draw button is not pressed to be able to select areas of the timeline. Now use the same technique as before to generate a waveform. The main difference at this stage is that we use more periods. Let's try with 8. What comes after the tone in our imagined sound? That's right, noise. Select the remainder of the timeline and generate white noise. Now I want the noise to fade out. To do that, select the area where the fade out will occur, right click, select advanced, then volume fade. Adjust the parameters and click OK. We want the volume to start at 100 and end at 0. One last thing. Remember we wanted some noise in the beginning for extra attack? Just add some like we've done previously. If you haven't already, give your sample a try. Remember to make sure you're not in edit mode. Many times I wanted to try out a sample, just to find out I was in edit mode. And overwrote parts of my current pattern. Grrr. Now we need a bass drum. Select another instrument. Then create a new sample with size 2000. Same procedure as with the snare drum. Here's my super beatbox version. <coughs> How do we interpret this sound? Well, first we'll add a bit of noise for the attack. Like this. Now listen to the tone. Did you notice it drops in frequency or pitch? It does. Visually, that is represented by a waveform that gradually increases in period length. To achieve that, select a small portion of the timeline and generate one period. We can go with the sine wave this time, which is kind of soft. Now select a new portion, following the last but a bit larger. Generate one sine period, repeat this process a few times.
What this does is it gives us a waveform that gradually drops in frequency. Once we're satisfied, we'll make sure it fades out. Select the area, then right click, select advanced, and volume fade. Now for the hi-hat I usually go with something like this. The simple white noise that fades out. Make sure you save your samples. Also make sure you keep a nice structure. It really helps when you want to find that sample. I have a sample directory. In that folder I have more folders named kicks, snares and so on. I name the file as for example kick-001-30. The kick part to describe what kind of sound. The numbers to maintain a chronological order. That's just how I want it. And finally dirty to further describe the sound. I can for example have a snare called snare-007-electro. That's just one way of doing it, but it works for me. Short, fast, to the point, multiple! That concludes this intro to drum samples. If you like these tutorials, you can help the project by subscribing and pressing the thumbs up button. Comments are also appreciated, and if you're really fanatical about promoting fast music production, feel free to link to my website. For those who need the last minute updates or want to ask a question, you can reach me on Twitter. I always answer as fast as possible.